Welcome to New Year's Eve worship at Bethesda with collaborative ministry partner Ryerson. We're blessed and glad that you are here this New Year's Eve. Joy to the world.
This Christmas season, God of stable stars and surprises, of light and hope and new life, as you call us to worship on this New Year's Eve, in this Christmas season, open our eyes, open our hearts to your presence in our world. Open us to your grace, that we might hear again the song of the angels and respond with a song in our hearts and in our lives. Amen. The good news of this Christmas season and this New Year's Eve day is that the God of all time, of all eternity, comes into our lives, into our time, into our place, into our spaces, and says, In Christ you are received, my daughters and sons. Amen. Thanks be to God. Turning to being at Bethesda this morning, uh, thanks goes to all who donated to our Christmas campaigns. And uh, Al from the Living Rock tells me they would rather receive our, our warm clothing, mittens, and hats on into January, so that's when Al will receive them. Thanks as well to uh, all those who uh, provided for the uh, Christmas installations now in our sanctuary. And uh, next week when we gather, yes, it will be already uh, into January, and we'll be celebrating Epiphany and a new worship series here at Bethesda and at Ryerson. Uh, thanks goes to the ongoing contributions of ideas and insights, whether here at Bethesda or down at Ryerson. One such suggestion was that our outdoor sign feature the invitation for musicians to be out there all the time. And this week, one such musician saw the sign and has inquired about uh, coming in to share things good, beautiful, and true in music here at Bethesda. So thanks for the, the person who suggested that. And again, this morning, we thank uh, Janelle for being with us in our worship time today. Let us pray. Lord God, we have gathered at the call of God the Father and God the Creator. You now call us to not only gather, but to uh, guard our minds and hearts and let us be fully open to your word of life in the scriptures and in reflections this day. Amen. So we turn to our scripture readings this morning. And I am reading it this morning and most Sundays here at Bethesda from the uh, New Jerusalem Bible, uh, gifted to me at the time of covenanting with Bethesda some years ago. So our lectionary passages for today, uh, which many uh, churches will be sharing and hearing and giving heed to, begin with Ecclesiastes. Probably a familiar uh, passage dealing appropriately this day with time. There is a season for everything, a time for every occupation under heaven, a time for giving birth, a time for dying, a time for planting, a time for uprooting what has been planted, a time for killing and a time for healing, a time for knocking down and a time for building. A time for tears and a time for laughter. A time for mourning and a time for dancing. A time for throwing away stones and a time for gathering them. A time for embracing and a time to refrain from embracing. A time for searching and a time for losing a time for keeping and a time for discarding, a time for tearing and a time for sowing, a time for keeping silent and a time for speaking, a time for loving and a time for hating, a time for war and a time for peace. And our second scripture reading this morning is 
given to us as Psalm 148. Alleluia. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all shining stars. Praise him, highest heaven. Praise him, waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, at whose command they were made. He established them forever and ever by an unchanging decree. Praise Yahweh. Praise the Lord from the earth. All you sea creatures in the depths, fire and hail, snow and mist, storm winds that obey his word, mountains and every hill, orchards and every cedar, wild animals and all cattle, reptiles and winged birds, kings of the earth and all nations, princes and all judges on earth, young men and young women, old people and children together, let them praise the name of the Lord. And our New Testament reading from Paul's letter to the church at Galatia, chapter 4, passage of Christmas identity. But when the completion of time came, God sent his son, born of a woman, born a subject of the law, to redeem the subjects of the law so that we could receive adoption as sons. As you are sons, God has sent into our hearts the spirit of his son, crying, Abba, Father. And so you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir by God's own act in Christ. Amen. Thanks be to God for his word to us. I hymn a preparation this morning, infant holy, infant holy.
here at Bethesda and Ryerson to consider what child is this? Noting that the world around may or may not be asking that question, but chances are, most of them are. And in the church, in faith, we say, we proclaim, we live, we know. The answer to that question is Christ the Lord. Born in humbleness in David's city, born to set his people free. Into our New Year's, into this time, we have read from Ecclesiastes, a passage of scripture that is both realistic and varied and ends on a faith note, a hopeful note that God knows, God appreciates, to use a very popular word of the day, God enters into all of those various aspects of our lives, of your lives. That of mourning and dancing, that of embracing and refraining from embracing, that from finding and losing, and perhaps even on those sticking points of Ecclesiastes, in human reality, in broken reality, in reality, not yet fully realized, there is times where war is experienced, a time where hatred is experienced, and into all of that, God comes, God speaks, and God loves. Now, I know from a fairly long experience that uh, congregational participation is not necessarily the signature point of mainline churches, but occasionally a little sprinkle here and there uh, can sometimes be favorable. So on this day when in the world rounded about us, and perhaps for some of you, perhaps for many of you, there is this thing called New Year's Resolutions. Now, just as a sort of a uh, brief survey, who can remember uh, having kept, say, five resolutions? Not a hand in the room, and probably not at home either. Who in the room can remember keeping three New Year's resolutions? Some consideration, but again, the hands remain in the side. Who in the room can remember keeping even one New Year's resolution? A few. A few hands. Well, I will share my one kept New Year's resolution was to stop putting salt on my meals. Not exactly an overly ambitious resolution, but at least one that was kept. Well, here at Bethesda, and ongoingly at Ryerson as well, we have an eye not just to the present, but to the future. And uh, so, to the children who may be uh, watching and sharing in worship here on YouTube, I'll let you know that uh, uh, there is a uh, coloring sheet available that says, God bless our new year, and let your light shine. God bless our new year, and let your light shine. And so now for the children and for all of us, this transition, 23 to 24, here it is. <laughs>
pre-Happy New Year to us all. On a more, perhaps serious note, if you will, 2024 AD. And no, contrary to what many people think, 2024 AD does not mean after death, but rather from the Latin Anno Domino, the year of our Lord, the year, in fact, of our Lord's birth, the year, the ongoing years, decades, centuries, and now millenniums of God being given to us in Christ. That's a long time still many more years to come. Our first scripture invites us to consider the place of creation in Christmas. A long list is given of those who are called to worship. Cattle and hills and mountains and streams. And yes, in our overriding theme here at Bethesda and Ryerson, stars themselves, called to worship, called to acknowledge their Creator in their silent, non-conscious, but real and substantial way, giving testimony to God our Creator. And so the artist of this visual for this song declares, the stars were made to worship, so will I. Some resolutions. A resolution from Ecclesiastes. May it be resolved in Bethesda and Ryerson that we enter into each day of 2024 with the acceptance, the knowledge, and the loving presence God with us, no matter what. And another resolution, we'll be receiving these, you don't have to write them down, from Psalm 84. Be it resolved at Bethesda and at Ryerson that we enter into, we join with creation in rejoicing, in reflecting the goodness, the wonder, the love of God at every turn, and in every space, and in every place, in 2024 and beyond. Our New Testament passage. Paul lovingly, encouragingly speaks to the church at Galatia, speaking their identity. This passage is all about parenthood, and sonship, or fatherhood, and sonship, or parenthood, and being a daughter of God. And uh, last Sunday at uh, Ryerson, there was a baptismal celebration, a sacrament of identity, a sacrament that, re that recognizes the child to be baptized as part of that lineage that is promised to Abraham, that God's descendant. God's people, God's beloved agents and co-creators will be, says Genesis, as numerous as the stars. It is a naming sacrament. And this passage names us as children of God in Christ. I came across an interesting uh, article in the uh, New York Times Review of Books within the Saturday Spectator, which uh, had this to say, that there are honored living cells, one million trillion trillion living cells. And this is what really caught my attention. In this time of Advent, Christmas, and Epiphany, star-guided faith, more living cells than there are stars. 
more living, God breathed, created selves to give praise, even then stars in the heavens, stars in the skies. A New Year's resolution from Galatians. Be a resolve. Bethesda and Ryerson be strongly rooted in our identity as children of God. This is where we have landed this New Year's Eve. Not arbitrary, not like a gathering in Times Square or Nathan Phillips Square, as fun and as happy as and as cold as that might be. Not arbitrary, but surrounded, infilled, loved, specifically as the children of God. Now each year, going out on a limb here a little bit, I'm pleased to uh, be thankful for Christmas cards and greetings that come our way. And every year, I have the inclination to choose one, not necessarily a favorite, one that most speaks to where our worship journey has been from Advent and now ongoing Christmas and on into this New Year's. And so I couldn't help but choose this one with its dark blue starry sky speaking to that love of God in Christ and our ancestry in Abraham. The surround of creation and trees giving praise. The star on the evergreen tree chosen because the evergreen tree is just that, green even in times of cold and darkness. And then subtly in the background, the church light inviting creation and those who see that tree to come and worship, come and worship. 2024, Christ the Newborn King. A brief moment of preview. Next week, uh, we celebrate Epiphany and then on into 2024 and into the second year of our ministry by design, focusing on God the Son and bold discipleship. Now for our uh, young people, perhaps young adults, hopefully for all of us, an expression of what faith might look like, what the challenges of faith might sound like on this New Year's Day. In a song, that title, New Year's Day.
Well, thank you, Switchfoot, for that invitation in, into faith. In case you missed the lyrics, here are some of them. All last year got the best of me, and I'm not sure if I'm ready for another go. You feel euphoria is gone, it's time to move on. I believe we can change. When the notes come out wrong, stop singing along. We can't be the same old thing. It's New Year's Day. I'm tearing down the past years off the wall. I'm coming at you like a wrecking ball. It's New Year's Day. And I think I'm going to make it after all. It's New Year's Day. Well, may we find the grace and the presence to join the singers of that song in having the wisdom to tear down past years off the wall, especially the songs that are out of key, not literal songs, songs and relationships and things in our lives and our churches that are out of key, and be open to the change that the Spirit is always bringing and a true embracing, like the stars of joy, like fireworks on a New Year's Eve celebration, if any of us are up to that late hour, which I'm about 50-50, whether I'm gonna make it or not. May we have that grace to embrace and with Christ and each other and creation, make of 2024 Another year of our Lord, a beautiful thing. Speaking of which, I was in St. Joseph's Hospital this past number of weeks doing a visit and I was caught short by the Tim Hortons and their large sign, their large slogan for Christmas this year. Tim Hortons, believe in kindness. So a faith word. Use yes as a slogan, but why not as people of faith? Take it. Blend it into who we know we are called to be in Christ and have yet another resolution. Be it resolved in Bethesda and Ryerson that we are deliberately open Bringing kindness, acceptance, inclusiveness, truth and reconciliation and justice in 2024. In my daily readings this past week, there were a few, these a few gems for New Year's in faith, in the ongoing gifts of the Christ child. In 2024, writes Brian McLaren, wherever you invest your life, I will hope, I hope it will be in this larger move, movement, laboring for the birth of something new. Embrace the long view and find the deep current, the infinite flow. And from Matthew Fox, in his entry for today, the creator to chose to visit our tiny planet in human form. Saint Irenaeus said, God became a human being and in order that human beings might become like God. This great mystery we call God had humble beginnings in earth, but he grew into a parable teller who spoke directly to the hearts of ordinary and oppressed people under the yoke of an empire, displacing it, beginning in the hearts of humanity. And so Matthew Fox leaves us with this note. Within our hearts, in 2024, may God's reign find our human capacity for love and compassion, justice and forgiveness. Some tall orders for one little year for 
two churches for assembled peoples, but peoples with inner creation that is praising God, peoples that are called sons and daughters of God by grace, people who can and are called to live in and through Christ in love and in hope. Our response of him, once the royals gave it to the city. Please stand and sing along if you're comfortable doing so. to that invitation to enter into 2024 with blessing and reception and stand and give thanks in the words of the doxology.
específico. Let us come together in prayer. Let us pray. Living, loving, creating God, into this year of our Lord, 2024, you invite us to continue to dwell in you, in whom there is no shadow or change, year in, year out, day in, day out. On this New Year's Eve, we would pause to give thanks for all your saints who have come before us, those souls most precious to us. We give thanks for those who during this past year of 2023 have lived and brought praise and hope and who have passed into your glory. God of Jesus and our God, into this year that is to come. Teach us and each 21st century disciple of every race and place to have resolutions, to fill our time with your presence, to join with creation in resolutely praising you, to know that we are children of God and that you go with us to bring forth acts of kindness, love, and hope. Lord God and Jesus Christ, by your Holy Spirit, may we find 2024 to have many opportunities taken to feed the poor in body or spirit, to support and comfort the mourners, and the broken, to encourage the meek and stand with them in crisis, to affirm those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, to cherish and learn from the merciful, to be humbled by and stand with the peacemakers. Into this year, we offer a blessing and a commitment to clearly recognize what it means to be called children of God and to know that our being so will be by the call and the healing holiness found by our residing in Jesus Christ, our Lord, who calls us to pray together, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Our sending him this morning from heaven to earth I came. We stand and sing along.
God on your sons and daughters gathered here and in other places and in creation. We do dedicate, we do resolve, we do commit ourselves by the gift of your Spirit to recognize and to know the praise of creation to know our days as opportunities to be filled with your grace. To know that the gift of Christ, the Christ child that we have celebrated this Advent and ongoing Christmas season is the gift of a relationship to you, of closeness, and of the capacity by your spirit to bring your love your peace, your joy, your hope to all. And so, into 2024 and always, in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the peace of the Holy Spirit, be on and through you all. She's waiting for love.